This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Soil Science playlist. It's all about soil, the composition, how it's formed, different types. And this video, we're looking at a certain horizon or certain layer of the soil, which is called the B horizon. Now, in terms of general location, the B horizon or B layer is shown in the diagram on the right hand side and it's called the subsoil. It is generally located below the O and A horizon, the topsoil, towards the surface horizon. And if the soil is developed over a long period of time, it might have a thin E horizon or E layer, which stands for alluviation, which is the amount of movement or transported material down through the soil from the top layers down towards the bottom layers and towards the B layer. So this E horizon could be there in a small thickness layer above the B and then below the B horizon, below the subsoil is a substratum or the parent material which we call the C horizon. So the B horizon is, in terms of its location, is like that in-between intermediate layer that buffer area between the top soil and the bottom part of this soil profile which is going to be just the the unaltered mineral layers the sea layer sea horizon and also the r horizon which is the bedrock which is where the sea horizon generally gets its material its parent material from so in terms of soil formation soil development Generally, the C horizon is the weathered or broken down bits of the R horizon bedrock. So the C horizon kind of forms in conjunction with the A horizon at the top, topsoil. Now those two first horizons are really the initiation of soil and it takes tens of thousands of years to develop this soil and have further horizons form within the profile. So you're going to have in some areas or most areas you're going to have a layer of organic material, either living biota or dead decomposing organic material, which is decomposed by detritus, uh, detrivores and uh, bacterial and decomposers. And the organic material is going to mix in with the, uh, with the mineral component and start to form that O horizon and A horizon. Then there'll be some percolation in E. So the B horizon kind of forms after the A and C when the O horizon starts to take hold at the surface and you start to get percolation and leaching, which is the movement or transportation of materials, both organic and inorganic, down through gravity, down deeper into the soil to form a mixture of the organic material and the decomposing material called humus and the rocky mineral material which is broken down again further compared to the C horizon. C horizon has larger bits of material, the B horizon is, is, is weathered down smaller so you might get some smaller pieces of mineral components in the B horizon. So, yeah, so the B horizon is that buffer where you have some leached and translocated material into the B horizon plus you have that mineral and weathered material and you might have some root development down there as well but you will have this buffer this this kind of like dividing line the B horizon is the dividing line between the solid rock and, and bits of rock then more of the organic material above it so it's a mix of obviously clay and organic material which is OM and also we have some traces of iron and aluminum or aluminium now the clay is very important and so is the organic material because this is the zone of accumulation which means that the small particles of both the organic material the humus which is the result of decomposed organic matter by decomposers and it can't break down any further so humus is the last stage in the, the decomposition of organic material both plant and animal and you have the very small mineral component of soil which is clay now clay is the smallest with a diameter of 0.002 millimeters it's very very tiny then you get silt and sand which are larger physical 
pieces, whereas clay is very, very small. Now, clay and organic material make up what's called a colloid. A colloid is a very tiny particle that has to be around or uh, smaller than 0.001 millimeters. And they have a very large surface area and they're usually negatively charged and they are very important in the fertility and growth of the soil because they, these colloids, these very tiny pieces that are in the B horizon that accumulate, they're in charge of grabbing all the nutrients and elements out of the water and the soil, like the calcium, the magnesium, the potassium, the sodium, the aluminum, the uh, nitrates, all these different things are grabbed out and attracted by a small electrical force between the negative charge of the colloids, both clay and organic material, and the particles in the water and the elements and ions. So there is an attraction and a grabbing of nutrients by these particles in the soil, in the B horizon, which allows for the soil to become fertile and have a high nutrients uh, capacity, and then it can hold a lot of organic material produce a more fertile soil. So this is the most chemically active, very active part of the soil, which is the colloids. Now it's a different color. It's a little bit, it's a little bit lighter than the A and the E horizon because of the leaching and because of the clay. So the B horizon can come in two different variations. Now, if the soil is not very well developed, then you might have a BW horizon, which is a weaker layer, thin and weak layer. Weak meaning that there is very small amounts of clay. It's just starting to develop. And if the clay content increases to a higher amount, then it will become a regular B horizon, which we call a BT layer, which has that silicate clay layer calcium carbonate, the kelonite, which is one type of clay uh, colloid, which, which accumulates in this layer. And this is due to a high levels of chemical weathering through the soil, through leaching and percolation. So once we have this organized, developed BT layer, this BT horizon, we can also divide it into the three layers, basically, or three sections. Now the B1, which would be at the top, of the B horizon, it's a thick enough horizon. The B1 layer is that boundary, that kind of transitional period or layer between the A and the B boundary the horizon. And this is to do with leaching, organic material, and also can start to form the main part of the B horizon. Then you get B2, which is the central part of the B horizon. That's where the majority of the colloids the organic material, the clay colloids will be accumulated. And this is where most of the chemical processes and the attraction of nutrients is going to happen. Then you get the B3, the bottom layer, like, like the uh, the basement layer. That's the, again, transition between the B and the C horizon. We have perhaps larger, you would have perhaps larger weathered material from, this, from the R horizon or C horizon and a lot less organic material, a lot less clay, and you're starting to get to the end of what's called the solemn, which is really just the, the name given to the top part of the soil. The mixture of components which make up soil is called solemn, and the bottom of the B really is the extent of this layer. And then you get just into the mineral, rocky component rather than any kind of organic material. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.